what's in the box. Before getting into the tutorial, we thought you might find it useful to know what comes in the basic kit with your Nectar Hex, as well as a few details specific to each accessory, so you get an idea of how to use them. So let's check it out. And may I just point out that the box is made from 100% recycled and compostable hemp fiber, so feel free to chuck it in the compost bin once you're done with it. So in the box, you get the Nectar Hex Vaporizer, a USB-C charging cable, a reusable dosing capsule for herbs, a reusable dosing capsule for extracts, a cleaning kit, including a brush and two isopropyl alcohol pads, three gauzes for the resin trap and a QR code card, which contains the warranty registration and user manual. The USB-C charging cable is suitable for fast charging. So just ensure to use a decent plug to charge your device from zero to 100% in 60 minutes. The user manual features a variety of languages including German, English, Spanish, French and Italian. Simply scan the barcode on the card and choose the language. When it comes to using your dosing capsules, regardless of whether you're using a capsule for herbs or extracts, make sure you put them in the chamber the right way up by keeping the entrance at the top. And of course, remember to let the device cool slightly before handling the capsules straight out of the chamber. The cleaning brush can be used for cleaning the chamber and resin trap but remember to dab it into a little bit of isopropyl alcohol as you may struggle cleaning off sticky residue without it. The alcohol pads can also be used for cleaning flatter parts such as the gauzes. Moving on to the gauzes, you get three gauzes in the box and you can put those straight into the holder in the battery cover so they're ready for when they're needed. When it comes to cleaning a vaporizer, there's generally two sections that require most attention, the chamber and the cooling unit, which is where most of the sticky residue ends up. Nectar has paid much attention to detail and listened to customer feedback and, as a result, designed this device with minimal cleaning in mind. Firstly, the use of dosing capsules minimizes the effort needed to clean the chamber. Additionally, the resin trap minimizes the effort needed to clean the cooling unit. Most of the sticky residue gets collected in the resin trap before it gets to your mouthpiece, allowing you to easily switch out for a new one, or for those you that want to cut back on costs, you can simply clean it with isopropyl alcohol and pop it back in. The frequency of cleaning really depends on how much you use the device and whether or not you use dosing capsules. A great way of gauging whether your device needs a clean is by the level of residue built up on the gauze at the base of the resin trap. Simply lift the cooling unit and have a look. If most of the holes are covered with residue, then it's time for a clean. If you want to know more on how to clean your Nectar Hex Vaporizer, then check out our How to Clean the Nectar Hex Vaporizer video, which will be released soon and should pop up now once it's ready. Tutorial. So we've covered the accessories and we'll now look at how to use the device. Once your device arrives, the first thing you should do is charge it using the USB-C cable that comes with the vaporizer or any other USB-C cable. Charging the device is key for enabling the battery to perform better for longer. So plug it in and charge it fully and you'll know when it is fully charged when the battery indicator stops blinking. Given the fast charging capabilities of the Nectar Hex, you should be able to charge your device from 0 to 100% in 60 minutes. And since your device will already arrive with some charge, you probably won't need to charge it for more than 30 minutes when it comes straight out of the box. When your device is off, you can check the battery level by clicking the power button once, and the battery indicator will flash once, showing you the level of battery. The next step is to sterilize it, and you should do this with any new vaporizer you buy. This burns off any manufacturing scents which may still be left in the device. To do this with your Nectar Hex, click the power button repeatedly five times to turn on the device. Then using the up button, increase the temperature to the highest it goes, which is 240 degrees. It will automatically begin to heat 
up. Once it is fully heated up, allow the vape to run through a whole cycle. Once the cycle is finished, the hex will automatically switch itself off to conserve battery life. But don't be fooled into thinking you can't change the auto off timer setting when you come around to using the device. You can switch the session length between three, six, and nine minutes by simply pressing and holding the power and the up button together for three seconds. And then using the up and down buttons to toggle through the options and then clicking the power button once to confirm your selection. Now you're ready to load your heating chamber up with the herbs or extracts of choice. If using the device with extracts, you'll need to use the extract dosing capsule, which we'll cover in a moment. For now, if you're vaping herbs, grind up your herbs, detach the cooling and load up the chamber with your herbs. For optimal performance when vaping herbs, we recommend filling the chamber and then compacting the herbs softly using the base of the magic, but avoid over compacting as that can restrict airflow. Next, reattach the cooling unit, turn the hex vaporizer on and set it to your desired temperature. There's no optimal temperature, but in order to ensure your herbs last the longest, they probably can, then we advise to start on around 180 degrees Celsius and increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius until you reach 230. This allows you to gradually utilize the compounds within your herbs as opposed to using them all up in the first session. And by doing this, you should get around five sessions per bowl. By the way, if you're someone who prefers Fahrenheit as opposed to Celsius, then feel free to change the temperature setting by holding the power and down buttons simultaneously for three seconds, and then toggling between Celsius and Fahrenheit by using the up and down buttons, and then confirming your selection by pressing the power button once more. When heating your device, you'll notice two temperatures displayed on the screen. The actual temperature, which is the live temperature of the device and can be seen at the top of the screen. And the other is the set temperature of the device, also known as the desired temperature. And this will increase or decrease to the actual temperature you have set. And you'll be able to see this just below the actual temperature. Once the device is fully heated, it will let you know by vibrating. The hex heats up incredibly fast and can reach 200 degrees in around 20 seconds. But it's always worth waiting a few more seconds before drawing from the device, just to give all the herbs a chance to heat up fully. Whilst the device is heating up, it's best to keep the mouthpiece rotated inwards as the vape seal will be activated and any vapor being produced by the chamber will be locked into the chamber and ready for vaping. Just before you toke, rotate the mouthpiece outwards which will open up the vape seal and allow the vapor out. Doing this isn't essential but it's a nice touch that gives you more vapor per load. Whilst you're inhaling the vapor, take long, slow and smooth tokes lasting around 5 to 10 seconds per toke without pressing any buttons. Once you've had a number of sessions, you'll notice the herbs have discolored by going black in color. And this is your cue to change the herbs. For those that are new to vaporizers, it's important to know that you don't need to finish the herbs in one session. In other words, vape them until they go black in one sitting. You you can have a session, put the device down for as long as you want and then pick it up and start from where you left off on another day if you want. When you're finally ready to empty the chamber or replace the load for a new batch, regardless if you're using dosing capsules or not, always ensure you wait a moment for the chamber to cool down before you empty the chamber or remove a dosing capsule. If you're using the herb dosing capsule that comes with the device, then you can follow a similar process to fill the capsules as you would do the chamber. Simply remove the capsule lid, fill the capsule to between half full and full, compact the herbs slightly, reattach the lid, and then place the capsule into the chamber the right way up by ensuring the lid is facing up and not down towards the chamber. 
When using the dosing capsule for extracts, you'll notice that the capsule has an open top, meaning there's no lid. When applying extracts into the extract capsule, you simply need to apply a small amount of extract onto the capsule. We recommend roughly the size of half a pea, gradually increasing to the size of a pea to find your preferred amount. When you're ready, drop the capsule into the chamber the right way up, ensuring the extract is facing up to the cooling unit and not down into the chamber. Reattach the cooling unit and then set the device to around 235 degrees Celsius. It's also worth noting that you can adjust the airflow coming through the device using the airflow slider at the base of the device. By doing this, you can adjust the flavor and also the intensity of the throat hit. Generally, a tighter airflow will provide a bigger throat hit, warmer vapor, and slightly more intense flavors. Be sure to play around with the slider and find your perfect setting. As mentioned earlier on in the video, once you've used your device a number of times and it needs a clean, you can do so by detaching the cooling unit and having a look at the gauze at the bottom of the resin trap. If the majority of the holes in the gauze are covered with resin, then you can take this as a sign that it needs a clean. We will be releasing a dedicated video on how to clean the nectar hex, but for now, it's worth noting that you can simply detach the parts that make up the cooling unit like like so. Start off by pulling out the mouthpiece, then detach the resin trap and the three parts that make it up. Now you're set for a clean. You can just use the brush dipped in isopropyl alcohol to remove any sticky residue which has built up over time. Once the gauze at the bottom of the resin trap has been exhausted and past the point of recovery, then you can simply switch out for a new one using one of the gauzes which is conveniently stored in the battery cover. It's also worth noting that the residue can actually be collected and reused by adding it to your tea or even on the extract capsule for vaping. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We hope that you found it helpful. And remember, if you enjoyed the video, then remember to hit the like button. If you found it helpful or simply want to stay tuned with our latest videos, then please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button to be notified when we release new content. And most importantly, if you have any questions, then drop them in the comment section below and we'll get answering within a day or two. Have a great day and we hope to see you next time. Be good and if you can't be good, be careful.